late archaic period in ancient prehistoric Michigan. Most of my experience has been with late woodland and middle woodland cultures, so it was quite exciting for me to happen upon a late archaic site that no one else seems to know existed. A good question would be, why do I believe this site to be late, late archaic? And I'll answer that question as we go along. While I am talking with you, though, the photos you'll be looking at are images of the actual relics that I have found. This has been an awesome journey for me, and I hope you will find it interesting also. The three archaic periods uh, in Michigan, early, middle, and late, uh, covered a period between 8,000 and 500 BC. For the purpose here, the late archaic period lasted from 3,000 BC till 500 BC, and I have found very little written uh, about this area during that time frame. Uh, so I will be drawing some conclusions based on information that is published about the period as a whole, as well as on the artifacts that I have myself found. If I am correct about the time period, then the people who would have depended, uh, who would li ha lived there, would have depended on hunting, fishing, and collecting a large variety of plant foods. From what I have been able to read, it appears that the late archaic people were wanderers who established their homes near where food was mostly most easily found, and when the food was depleted, they would move on. Some sources state that it is likely that some camps remained uh, fairly permanent bases when sizable groups of people congregated periodically, and by the same token, other sites were quite small and temporary, perhaps occupied by a single family for a short period of time. And this single family uh, concept is what I believe this site I have come across was. On woodland sites uh, that I worked some time ago now, you could look at the stone tools and the pottery and see the individual styles indicated uh, uh, that many different people were at work in the same area. But here at this site, all the pieces found look as though they were made by one man or a small group of closely related men and women. Something unusual here um, is that one, these artifacts are by and large very crude in manufacture, and two, there is a complete absence of pottery at the site. And the absence of pottery helps lead me to the conclusion that this is an archaic site because pottery did not come in until the er early woodland periods. The stone artifacts, as I said, are, are very crude. This does not necessarily mean they are of an, any particular period, but it does lend itself to earlier time frames in my estimation. The tool assemblage I have found at this site consists of partial arrowheads, celts, gorgets, drills, microblades, mace heads, and knives. There were also a few pieces that might be considered tools for processing uh, food, such as finger pestles. Some sources indicate that there was a growing emphasis on trade and ceremonialism in the late archaic times that foreshadowed developments among the cultures of the woodland tradition. There is a wonderful paragraph written by Jill Arnold of the Archives of Michigan about our state's prehistory. I'd like to quote a paragraph here. Michigan's sto uh, story is mostly unwritten. It is mostly a Native American Indian story. Almost all we know about the thousands of years before English-speaking settlers uh, we have learned through Native American tradition and clues discovered by archaeologists. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to debate the point here of who makes the most significant contribution to archaeology. But I want to give my, my opinion, and that is that dedicated able vocational archaeologists have made just as much, if not more, of a contribution than the professional archaeologists. By and large, it is avocational archaeologists that have found sites, particularly, say, in the last uh, 40 or 50 years. Uh, but I'd like to quote one more paragraph from Miss Arnold's writing. Um, and I quote, Thousands of years ago, the land we know as Michigan was shaped by glaciers. Long before, long before there were people living here, ice a mile thick moved slowly back and forth across the state. The ice acted like a huge bulldozer scraping and gouging the land's surface. End quote. That's hard to imagine. But during the archaic periods, Michigan and its inhabitants went through lots of changes. As the Middle Archaic um, dawned in Michigan, the environment was changing. The people looked for new ways to make use of their resources. New types of tools came about, which gave a great assist to them as they gathered food and produced items for everyday survival. The people learned how to grind and polish stones like granite and to work it by the arc pecking method. At the site I have found, uh, there 
uh, bo bone appears appears to have been used uh, as raw material for certain types of tools. Now, I ask you to please understand as I go through the artifacts that I have found that I am not a professional archaeologist. Um, but I have learned a lot in the past 30, 35 years. And what I can't tell you about this site, based on how small an area that I could observe, is my best opinion of what transpired here. But please understand that there may be other interpretations of the site and the artifacts. And when I wa uh, worked at the Goodwin Gresham site and the old Bennett and Creek site in Oscoda, Michigan, the artifacts formed three categories. One, stone or lithics, two, pottery or ceramics, and three, bone remains of food production. At this site, artifacts are represented by two basic categories, which are one, lithics, and two, bone. There is one copper artifact that was found there, and this too uh, lends to the uh, credibility of it being a late archaic site. There is a complete absence of pottery as ceramics did not come into use, as I said, in Michigan until the early woodland period, about 800 BC. However, with the absence of pottery, there are uh, quite an amazing array of stone and bone pieces, much more abundant than on sites of the woodland traditions. In fact, though most pieces are quite crude, there were quite a few pieces that, were, that really surprised me as they were very unexpected. To begin with, the site, well, like the two mace heads, for example. But to begin with, the site today is very sandy, and I believe that it would have been that case when it was originally occupied all those uh, <laughs> thousands of years ago now. All the pieces I have found were on the surface of the ground, and as such were under a house that was built in the 1890s, which helped preserve the site. As we have had uh, heavy rains and winds, more and more items have been brought out to the surface by natural process. Based on the small area I have looked at, I believe this was a small group of people, perhaps a family unit. Um, there is no way I can determine how many that would be at present. Now, uh, uh, this was going to be a much more in-depth report to you, but um, some restrictions from YouTube because of a mistake that I made, and it was a mistake, has uh, me not able to make videos over... 15 minutes long. So I'll actually break this probably in two parts so that you can see all the photographs. The photographs will be, as you can see already, um, captioned so that you know exactly what you're looking at. But I'm going to read a piece from you uh, about the archaic period again, 8,000 to, five, to 500 BC. And this was written about um, Ohio, but as I see things, I don't think that uh, it would have been much different here in uh, Michigan and in the Saginaw Valley. And that report goes, the economy of archaic cultures depended on hunting, fishing, and collecting a wide variety of plant foods in an essentially modern environment. Recent evidence from Kentucky and Tennessee indicates that late archaic people may have domesticated squash around 2300 BC. People became increasingly efficient in their adaptation to various environments throughout the Ohio area. Archaic communities established camps in various parts of their territories during different seasons of the year according to the availability of food resources. Some of those camps remained fairly permanent bases where sizable groups of people congregated periodically. Others were quite small and temporary, perhaps occupied by a single family <clears throat> for a short period of time. In addition to chipping spear points and knives from flint, the archaic people learned how to make axes and various types of food pot processing tools by grinding and polishing hard stones such as granite and also by the use of the arc pecking method. A growing emphasis on trade and ceremonialism in late archaic times foreshadowed developments among the cultures of the woodlands. I'm sure as you can tell by the background noise that um, people are gearing up for the 4th of July. I would like to continue reading from another paper um, about just titled looking at prehistory early archaic period 8000 to 6000 BC this um, uh, was published or prepared by Indiana's Hoosier National Forest uh, uh, service and um, their report begins the early archaic period uh, is a time when hardwood forests and prairies were established in Indiana in response to the warming climate after the ice age White-tailed deer became a primary source of meat for archaic peoples, along with black bear, elk, and many smaller animals that live in Indiana today, as well as in our area. 
The Indiana black bear and elk were finally hunted to extinction by around 1850. Collections housed at the Glen A. Black Laboratory of Archaeology contain a black bear skull, reportedly found in near Hazleton, Indiana, that exhibits a round hole in the skull, indicating a musket or rifle was used to kill the animal. Bison were numerous and heavily exploited on the Central Plains during the Paleo-Indian and early Archaic periods, but not in the eastern United States. However, and this is my interjection here, it is believed that buffalo did have their territory that extended into the Great Lakes here. Continuing with the, uh, the report, though, Early archaic people, much like the Paleo-Indian people, frequently changed the locations of their hunting and collecting camps to take advantage of hunting opportunities. Their camps were most often small and only used for a short time. A campfire or two uh, with uh, some rocks and debris from making tools along with a few broken and worn out tools is all that many sites contain. While there is no archaeological evidence of structures during the early Archaic and the early Paleo-Indian periods, their homes were probably made with poles and covered with hide, grass, and bark, depending upon um, their, uh, their location or the location of the camp and the available building materials. These remains are so old and scarce that little has survived to help us understand these people and their lives. Early Archaic peoples are no doubt descended from the earlier Paleo-Indian people, but the genetic relationships can only be determined generally because early human remains that can be used for genetic analysis are scarce and widely scattered. Based on the numerous types of tools and the wide geographical dispersal of the tools, we can be sure that there were numerous individual groups of people more or less related but nonetheless distinct in their own right, and the same statement applies to what we know from many late, later archaeological periods. <clears throat> like Clovis and earlier Paleo-Indian peoples, early archaic people frequently revisited church quarries or flint quarries where large pieces of high quality chert could be used to make projectile points and butchering tools. Early archaic projectile points are some of the most common and readily recognized tools in prehistory because they are larger than average. We made in large numbers or were made in large numbers and were left by the thousands on hunting camps that were spread across the landscape in areas of uh, Indiana and also throughout the Great Lakes region. Um, to conclude this portion, I would like to say that um, lithics are the uh, primary artifacts that I've recovered at this site. And um, while there are some very recognizable forms, most are obscure, slightly modified pieces like um, Cabo Cabomano's uh, um, hammering stones and uh, pieces such as, as that. So with that said, um, enjoy looking at the rest of the photos if they do not fit in my 15-minute restriction, I will do a part two with the photographs. Hey, thanks for ch um, stopping by and checking things out. You guys and gals are always appreciated. God bless and have a great evening.